It has been a full semester of sports here at App State and the A-Game is bringing you the final show of the semester. Included in today's final show is coverage from football's Sunbelt clinching win over Louisiana Lafayette, men's and women's basketball, and coverage from a big win for the wrestling team. Desmond Reed and Jake Babick join us for the final time today as they prepare to graduate and we bring you the semester's final A-Game Player of the Week as we get started right here on the A-Game. It was senior day at The Rock, and Appalachian State honored 19 of its seniors, some of which were on the team's last season of competition in the FCS. It was a bittersweet moment pregame when all of the seniors' parents joined their sons on the field to be honored before their last time playing at home. After Louisiana scored on their third play of the game, the black and gold offense marched down the field on their second drive of the game, and senior quarterback Taylor Lamb ran in for 29-yard touchdown and the 23rd of his illustrious career. Eric Boggs, another senior for the Mountaineers, also had a big day with a team high nine tackles, one sack, and this interception. He led a defense that allowed only 369 yards for 14 points and forced three turnovers. But it was the freshman for Appalachian State that stole the show, in particular, Thomas Hennigan. In App State's, get this, 63-14 victory, Hennigan tied an Appalachian State record with four receiving touchdowns, and yes, we're going to show you all of them. He finished the game with 99 yards receiving, those four TDs, and a punt return for a touchdown that was called back. The freshman receiver finishes the regular season with 44 receptions, 556 yards, and seven touchdowns. In the win against Louisiana on Saturday, it also marked his first career multi-touchdown game. Hennigan also contributed defensively for the Mountaineers when he brought down Laverius Bernardo on fourth down. Jalen Moore would rush for 110 yards and a pair of touchdowns, bringing his season totals to 912 yards on the ground and nine scores. And it was also another freshman, this time Dietrich Harrington, that tallied huge numbers on senior day. Number 19 in black would run for a game high 118 yards on 17 carries and one score. But in the end, head coach Scott Satterfield would put his senior quarterback Curtis Fitch in for his second ever appearance donning the black and gold. He ran twice for six yards and this feel good touchdown in the final moments of the game. The team would swarm the senior QB in the end zone to celebrate the moment on their way to the largest win of the season, winning by 49 points. Ashley Smith was at Kid Brewer Stadium for all the action and has more on the game. It was senior day here at Kid Brewer Stadium and the seniors left everything out on the field, defeating the University of Louisiana 63-14. Head coach Scott Satterfield said that the team chemistry over the past month has set the tone for the rest of the season. I'm just really proud of these seniors. This senior class has been the, the, the force behind everything as far as that transition into, into FBS. And it's very fitting for them to, to finish their career here um, at the Rock, um, Kid Brewer Stadium, with a, a Sun Belt Championship. They're second and an opportunity to go win their third bowl. And, um, you know, it's been a great class, a great leadership on, on a lot of these seniors throughout their tenure here. And I'm just really, really proud. With at being bowl eligible, they will play on either the 16th or the 23rd this month. Reporting for App TV in the A-game, I'm Ashley Smith. Football coverage continues once again for the last time this semester. Desmond Reed, college football analyst here on the A-game, will be joining us. He'll be graduating in about 10 days. So congrats to you, but thanks again for joining us to break down some college football and Appalachian State. Big win at the Rock over the weekend against Louisiana Lafayette. And it's another big Sunbelt Conference championship for the Mountaineers, this time at home for the ring game. And it was senior day, but it was the freshman, Thomas Hennigan, four touchdowns in the end zone, and then Diedrich Harrison, a rushing touchdown to go along with 118 yards that really showed out on senior day. Yeah, um, the freshmen, they definitely stepped up this game. Uh, we talked about them throughout the show, throughout the season, how you know their ups and downs they've been having throughout the year, their growing pains and whatnot, and what the freshmen to do to, you know, turn, help turn this season around and 
get them back to another Sun Belt Championship like they did. So the freshmen they did definitely had performed well on senior day. You know, we had send the seniors out right, you know, just how Coach Sat always preached about. So I feel like the freshmen, they definitely stepped up. Um, you know, Diedrich, he definitely came a long way from, you know, not probably playing at all to have to jump in because, you know, Jalen Moore's out. So I feel like everything just flow, flowed in, came, gelled right together at the right time. So this is a team that, for me, just seems to be almost impossible to guard on the offensive side of the ball because they can win in so many different ways. Thomas Hennigan only one reception in the past two games, and then he, then he uh, just comes out and catches four touchdown passes off from senior quarterback Taylor Lamb. Ike Lewis didn't have all that great of a game, but he didn't really need to. Mm -hmm. This team is just so hard to defend. It's going to be tough for whoever they play in the bowl game coming up in a couple weeks. Oh, yeah, of course. Um, you know, Thomas, he, you know, he came a long way, tremendous uh, freshman. He's going to have a great uh, college career, of course. Uh, T. Lamb, you know, for him to be his own way out, be on the way out, the OG of the offense, you know, he definitely, you know, delivered and in his, se his senior season, with a, with a Sun Belt Championship and also a bowl, a bowl game. So who knows where to end up, but hey, I'm, they're in it. So it was in the first quarter, Taylor Lamb scored the first touchdown for the Mountaineers, a rushing touchdown down the right sideline. Big one for him on senior day. He also threw for, threw for 242 yards, four scores. Great day to see him, a senior quarterback, on the field playing well and in a, in a championship type atmosphere. Oh yeah, you definitely want to see your senior quarterback go out the way he did. You know, watching him and his growing pains from, you know, being thrown in the fire his freshman year to now as a senior quarterback leading, you know, his team to two Sun Belt championships and maybe three back-to-back -back bowl championships. Hopefully, hopefully. <laughs> so you know, just you know, he came a long way, and you know, Thomas Hennigan with the with with his record-breaking time record-breaking. You know, with touchdowns in one game, you know, that's a big that's a big step for him going to next season and so on, so on for all the other guys. So I feel like they capped it off really well. Uh, I'm sure Coach Sat and Coach Sat are very proud of them. And shoot, see, sky's the limit. Let's talk about another senior quarterback that not too many people, fans or no fans, know all that much about. Curtis Fitch, who only made two appearances in his career at Appalachian State. But he scored his first rushing touchdown uh, Saturday afternoon in the victory at the Rock. Really cool to see him be able to do that in a senior day. I know you had some experiences with him before, of course, being on the team. Talk a little about Curtis Fitch and then what that means to the team and for him on senior day scoring his first touchdown. Well, I mean, it's, it means everything, just how you saw it on the highlight. And, or if you had the game, just how you saw it. Like, everyone was excited for him. Cosette always preached to the guys that, hey, whenever you're – your number's called, man. Just be ready. And Curtis Fitz, he was ready. He he knew. He knows the offense like the back of his hand. You know, he's the signal caller. You know, him and T. Lamb, they have a pretty strong relationship. You know, and he's he's a he's a lovable guy. Everyone likes him. So, for that to happen, that moment on Senior Day, it was pretty big. So, we were definitely proud of him. So last year on the defense, it was John Law. This year, it's Eric Boggs, a big senior. Great performance yesterday. Interception, a sack, some tackles as well. Talk about Eric Boggs senior uh, linebacker for this team, played so well in his senior season. Oh, uh, yeah, Eric Boggs, he definitely came, he came to App, and he definitely put a stamp on his, his legacy here. Um, I feel like, you know, the, the energy that he helped bring to the team, even when, you know, John Law was here and he went down, you know, he was just the next man up. You know, he stepped right into it and played a role. Then senior season, you know, he had to be a leader, and I feel like he did that. On, he actually led this defense to another Sunbelt championship, and I'm sure at the top of the charts and all the statistics they have on paper. So I feel like he, he definitely, he definitely had, had brought, you know, the senior, that senior leadership that the team definitely needed. So the Mountaineers will have a ball game in a couple weeks, and uh, so we'll certainly look forward to seeing more seniors playing well and also that youth movement that we've seen the, so far this season, a couple of those freshmen playing so well on that team. And some seniors are leaving, but you've got some new guys coming in as well for next season. So thanks again, Desmond Reed, for joining us all semester long, giving us some A-game college football analyst and uh, giving us some insight on the team and everything else. So thank you for that, and congratulations on graduating here at App State. Thanks. So wish you the best. Thanks. Coming up, however, we got Jake Babick will be in here to talk some App State basketball with us as they had some other big wins 
over the weekend. Women's basketball as well. That's all next on The A-Game. Can you help me with this? My new dad teaches me all kinds of stuff. Hmm. Sure. He helps me with homework. That would be 3.6795. Thanks. Yep. He helps me with my decision making. I wouldn't use this one. Ever. And he's even teaching me how to drive. And that's why cars have bumpers. I'm learning so much. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of kids in foster care will take you just as you are. Hey, how's it going? I'm Kayla Craven. I play basketball on the women's team. And when I'm not shooting coops, I watch the A game. Welcome back to the A game. The women's basketball team took on the UAB Blazers at Holmes Convocation Center on Friday. LaPresha Stanley scored two career high goals of 14 points and five steals. Tierra Wilson also had 14 points for the Mountaineers. Bailey Plummer was one point shy of a double-double, scoring nine points coupled with a game-high 12 rebounds. The defense of the Mountaineers held the Blazers to one of their lowest percentages of the season from behind the arc. Coming out of the half, the black and gold created a comeback from a 14-point deficit, but in the end fell 70-59 to to the Blazers. On Sunday, the team traveled to Chapel Hill to face ACC opponent North Carolina. From start to finish, the Mountaineers played a tough game against the Tar Heels, with everyone on the bench getting some minutes. Every player to enter the game scored, with Bailey Plummer pulling out 15 rebounds, one shot of her career high that she set earlier this year. Freshman LaPresha Stanley led the team with nine points and grabbed eight rebounds. The Tar Heels were just too much in the end when they pulled away late in the game. Part of that has to do with the black and gold only making four three-pointers in the first half and failing to make any in the third and fourth quarters. Co-host and reporter Braxton Critcher was at Carmichael Arena with more on the team's effort and what is next for them. It was a 52-43 loss for the Appalachian State women's basketball team playing a UNC squad winners of three in a row. Coach Andrew Elderkin spoke after the game on how committed her team was to the game plan from start to finish. And after trailing by only one point at halftime, Elderkin is looking at the overall landscape of improvement after an impressive game like this. I thought our kids really bought in um, to the game plan. One of the biggest keys with Carolina, they're just such a high-powered offensive team that we knew if we didn't take care of the basketball, they would get easy runouts. Um, and we, we haven't um, gotten in a rhythm in terms of being like this 80-point scoring team, so we knew that we were going to have to keep the game in the 50s, and I thought our players did a really nice job. This is a good team, but we came in and we played hard. So we did, there are some things we can learn from, from this game, and that is cleaning up a bit on our offense, being able to uh, score. And that's really just adjusting to those things on offense. And I think we'll, we'll do good. I think today, you know, one of the biggest things we just talked about in the locker room was that everybody came in and did their job. I don't know if we've had a game where every person that's checked in um, has scored for us. And, and that was something that, you know, they noticed in terms of everybody played their role. And I think the talk in the locker room was like, we haven't really had that yet where everybody comes in and contributes. Um, so I think the team overall feels good about it. Obviously, the, the ones that are playing are frustrated. People, you want to win. You want to win. But I think um, as the head coach, I'm just seeing the bigger picture and the growth of this basketball team from game to game. As Elderkin and Stanley alluded to, the whole team bought into the game plan that is evident by a 15-3 bench point advantage for the Mountaineers. The team also held Carolina to their lowest point total of the entire season, and they'll look to keep those two things together as they travel to Wake Forest for a second consecutive on-the-road ACC opponent this Thursday night. For App TV in the A game, I'm Braxton Critcher. The men's basketball team traveled to Richmond, Virginia to take on the VCU Rams on Tuesday. It was a back and forth game between the Mountaineers and the Rams with under 12 minutes remaining in the game. After a 10-1 run from VCU, however, the Mountaineers fell 85-72. Junior Ronshan Shabazz scored 19 points for the Mountaineers along with a season-best five rebounds. Freshman and co-Sunbelt Player of the Week, Justin Forrest, helped lead the Mountaineers with 19 points as well. Senior Griffin Kinney put up eight points for the black and gold with the game-high seven rebounds and a career-high four assists. The Mountaineers bounced back on Saturday to defeat the University of South Florida 84-61 at Holmes Convocation Center, holding on to their perfect at-home record. Ron Shaw Shabazz led the Mountaineers with 21 points, five assists, and two steals. 
Justin Forrest contributed 19 points for the black and gold while matching Shabazz with five assists and two steals as well. Junior Tyrell Johnson added 13 points to the game with three rebounds and two assists. A-game reporter Sarah Glasgow with the Holmes Convocation Center and has more from the court. It was a great win for the Mountaineers tonight, 84-61 win over USF. The team usually averages rebounds 11 plus, but tonight with only a one point margin, they led an assist 17 to seven. The Mountaineers hope to continue to improve their free throw percentage on the road this weekend against Akron. For App TV and the A Game, I'm Sarah Glasgow. Our men's basketball coverage of Appalachian State continues now with Jake Babick, who like Desmond Reed, this is his last time of the semester, joining us to give us Appalachian State men's basketball coverage because he too is graduating. So we congratulate Jake and thank him for joining us to give us some more insight on the basketball team. A loss to VCU over the uh, last week and then a win against USF on Saturday. Um, one thing that I noticed in the game is that this team has the ability to stop runs. Um, like I think at the end of the half, USF had a 7-0 run to end the half, and then App State came out with a 9-2 run to start the second half. It was similar in the game um, against VCU. Lost the game but came back and played so well against the USF. Talk about the, uh, a, the ability to stop runs and then come back and play well after, after a loss like that. Yeah, definitely. You know, that's really been a big problem that our program has had for the last couple of years. Uh, it used to be we would get punched in the mouth, so to say, and we would kind of just take it. This year, we've kind of really developed a bounce back mentality where if someone tries to push us into a corner, we're able to push them back out. And I think having that mentality, it's really proven uh, to ourselves that we're a team that is a force to be reckoned with in the Sun Belt. And if we have that mentality, then we can compete with anybody in the country. Where do you think that mentality came from? It's just like from last year, you mentioned it didn't have it, then all of a sudden this, this team has it. I think we showed it in spurts last year. Uh, the level of consistency was definitely not there and that was reflected by our record. This year, Coach Fox really put a big emphasis on uh, fighting through fatigue, having mental toughness, having physical toughness, and those things I think has really resonated with the team and they've taken it to heart. So as Sarah mentioned in her stand-up, this is a team that's really difficult to beat because they can win in so many different ways. Typically, the team um, out-rebounds their opponents by plus 11 on the glass, but last night you only were in advantage by one rebound. Um, instead, it was the assist-to-turnover uh, type battle that they faced against uh, over the weekend. It was 17-7 to against UCF in that game, or USF, my, my bad. Um, so they, they really were able to share the ball, and at times Jim Fox called a timeout and said, hey, keep moving the ball, guys. They said, well, we got to work on. And 17-7 to assist ratio, uh, really good performance from the team. No, definitely. That's one of the biggest keys to our offense. You know, when you have an offense predicated on screening and ball movement, taking selfish shots, that really hurts the flow of the offense. So by having those extra passes, throwing those next passes to pass up a good shot for a great shot, that's when our offense is really flowing. And like you said, Rebounding has really been a strong suit for us when you got guys like Tyrell Johnson and Isaac Johnson in there grabbing boards. But having assists and having guys who are unselfish and willing to throw the next pass, that's what really makes us a good program. So Ron Chad Shabazz, 21 points on Saturday. Justin Forrest, the freshman with 19. That puts them at 40 points for the game. That's the third time already this year in just nine games that the two have combined for 40 or more points. One time he was close to 60 at 56. Um, really been a great combination at the guards position for those two. Um, where does that come from, from a freshman and a junior to mesh so well and play, play uh, hand in hand? That really just goes, I would say, to the coaching. You know, They're really lenient with guys, giving them the freedom to do what they do. And Justin's a guy who came in, uh, he had a great high school career, a great AAU career, he was well coached growing up. And that being the case, he came in with an attack mentality. And you know, it doesn't matter if it was Justin, it could have been O'Shawn Williams, it could be Craig Hinton. It doesn't matter who's scoring for us at the time, but having that complimentary piece like Justin with Shabazz, it's really been beneficial. And one thing I've seen from, from Forrest is that he has that composure of an upperclassman. He's only a freshman, 17 years old, and a couple times last night in the first half, he hit the deck to try and save a ball from going out of bounds cut up his elbow, had to get a patch to you know, hide the blood. And then it was in the second half, he did the exact same thing to his left elbow. So he has that fight to, rip, to want to win, to get after the loose balls, the composure of an upperclassman, but he's playing so well as a 17-year-old. Definitely, that maturity is, is years beyond his age. You know, he's done a great job in terms of what we've asked for him as uh, coaches and as a system. And he's just, like you said, he's playing light years beyond his age. So the team will have to travel uh, this weekend on Saturday. Uh, we'll, certainly keep our eyes on them throughout the rest of the year. This is our last show with you. 
So we do thank you for joining us uh, on the A-game to give us pre-game and post-game coverage of the Mountaineers this season. Uh, it's going to be a great year, I do believe, and uh, we're looking forward to the rest of the year, and we wish you uh, good luck wherever you end up. Thanks, Braxton. I appreciate it. Uh, you too. So coming up on the A-game, we've got a huge momentum-grabbing win for the wrestling team in Ohio this past week, plus the last player of the week on the A-game. That's all next. Stay right there. Look at you. You're at the top of your game. You're unstoppable. Nothing can throw you off track. Wait, is that your car? Uh-oh. Yeah, I saw that coming. That will throw you off track. You're looking at around 10 grand in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Let's try this again. Smart move. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. Welcome back. The wrestling team traveled to Ojai this weekend and clinched a huge win over the Bobcats, 18-14. The Mountaineers were down early in the match, but took an 18-9 lead going into the final match after Forrest Prisby, Alan Clothier, Randall Dibe, Kerry Miller, and true freshman DeAndre Swanson Bart had three-point decisions. The team will face off against number six, NC State, this Sunday in Varsity Gym. As you know, our Player of the Week goes to an athlete that has performed their best in competition. However, this week is just a little bit different. Senior Curtis Fitch of the football team usually is seen on the sidelines sending in calls to Taylor Lamb in the huddle. But on senior day, Fitch got his first career touchdown for App State and reacted by spiking the ball while the rest of the sideline ran to the end zone to help him celebrate. Fitch is majoring in business management, but hopes to go on into coaching after graduation in just a couple of weeks. From everyone here at the A-game, we're proud of Curtis and the football team for clinching a second straight conference championship and we wish you guys good luck in the Dollar General Bowl on the 23rd. What a great semester of Mountaineer sports. Thank you for joining us all season long for App State sports coverage. Now, while our show will not pick up until late January, we will continue to cover men's and women's basketball, wrestling, and the bowl game over Christmas break. Stay up to date on those by reaching out on our Facebook and Twitter pages. While this is goodbye for now, feel free to stay in touch with our show. We always love the feedback. For all the coaches, teams, students, Sam Moore, and App Vision, I'm Ashley Smith. This is Braxton Critcher saying so long for now and Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas.